Okay, so we have gone over script variables and the notion of scope, where the variables at the top are scoped script level. And if I want to refer to a script level variable like $P, there's the way you refer to it. We've looked at functions. I've added a few in here, uh, some simple ones, uh, rolling the die and using a random number to do that, displaying the score, allowing the user to play again. Okay, so let's take a look at what comes next. So next, here's kind of the main function of this script, and it's going to take up quite a bit of space here. Uh, I'll just have to scroll back to the top, and it's called player turn. So this is the function that controls what happens when a player is taking that player's turn. All right, so starting at the top of this function, declaring a local variable inside the function, not a script variable, to uh, hold the point tally that was mentioned. And so every single turn, you're going to keep the tally for that turn using the variable t. Uh, whether or not to keep on rolling, we've got a variable called go. And right now that's set to yes, because we've just started and we want to, we want to keep on rolling. All right, so pressing any key, you'll notice here this particular line of code allows me to just pause, wait for the user to press a key. All right, and once they've pressed a key, I'm going to do a while loop. Now, a while loop is going to run while the set of conditions here next to the word while are true. So while the go variable is equal to yes, and then all of this inside that while loop will function, and it will execute. So basically, while everything is a go, here's what we're going to do. We're going to run the roll function, which returns a random number between 1 and 6. We're going to capture that in the val variable. <coughs> Remember, if val is equal to 1, that means my roll was equal to 1. Now let me just pay, take you back to my diagram of my script logic and let's discuss again what what happens if I roll 1 well I lose my turn and it's the computer's turn and I lose my points that I had been tallying up for that turn. And so you see that's what happens if val equals 1 then player rolls one, turn ends, no points scored. And I'm going to change the color of the foreground and background on that so it really sticks out on, the, on my screen. And I set go equal to n because I don't get to keep on rolling. Okay, so that was, that was my unhappy path. Now the happy path, so where it's not equal to one down here is the else. So if it's not equal to 1, then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write out what the role was with a different color, background, and foreground to, so that it stands out. I'm going to tally up that value along with the other values that I may have scored up until this point. I'm going to... I'm going to, at this point, take a look at the possible score because the, the game needs to know that if you've reached a point which you could possibly win, then we're going to let you win whether you decide to pass or not. So we need to keep an eye on that. So whatever the script level score is, we're going to add the local tally to that as we go along. More along the lines of the happy path, if you have rolled a 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, let's show you the current tally. And again, here's my logic that if your possible score is greater than or equal to, notice that syntax. So if my possible score, PS, I've declared that right here. If my possible score is greater than or equal to the script level W, which you may recall was the amount of points required to win, then I win. So write out I win, set win equal to 1. Notice you're going to print out my my player's score is going to get all tallied up. You're going to display the score. And then you're going to offer me the option to play again by calling the play again function, which we looked at, which we looked at earlier. 
Now, further along the happy path, assuming that you didn't win, well, you just had a pretty good roll. You rolled a 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So I'm going to show you, if you hold now, this is what your score would be, and that's your possible score. And I'm going to display the actual score and I'll give you the opportunity at this point to roll again. And there's my Go variable in action. So if notice at this point, Go equals quit. I'm going to set the script level Q equal to Q. That identifies to the script that the user wanted to quit. If Go is equal to N, uh, you don't want to roll again, then we're going to tally up your score and we're going to add that to your score right here and show you what your score is. And now it's going to be the computer's turn. Okay, so now the computer's turn. Let me paste that function in here. All right, so here, let me scroll back up. We have the computer's turn. And here is what's going to happen when the computer takes their turn. Now the first thing that is going to happen inside the computer turn is it's going to check to see if if I've already won. So if win is equal to 1, then, you know, set it equal to 0 and return. This keyword return, what that does is it ends the function unconditionally and returns all control out of that function. So if I've won, don't, don't play your turn. Uh, set your tally to 0 for this turn, for the computer's turn. And then here I've got a loop that's going to run five times. It's going to declare a variable i, set it equal to 1. While i is less than or equal to 5, it's going to increment five, uh, increment i one at a time using the plus plus operator. So that's your standard for loop. Loop five times. During those five times, you're going to roll, and you're going to then check the value. If the value is equal to 1, well, the computer rolls 1. It's the player's turn and return from that function, end. Or else, what I'm going to have you do here is pause for 500 seconds and allow the computer to roll and, sh you know, just kind of, I don't want to rush through the computer's rolls. I want the player to be able to observe them and uh, be able to see the rolls as they're occurring. So I'm going to have in between every roll a 500 millisecond pause, okay? And then you're going to paste, I'm sorry, uh, uh, print out what did the computer roll and uh, then the computer is going to have its own tally added up and it will show the computer's tally for this turn you know so provided it that's the computer's happy path provided it it didn't roll one that's that's what's going to happen for the computer um, and then down here let's do a check to see if the computer's tally is greater than or equal to what's required to win if so the computer wins and display that score with the computer's win, offer the player the opportunity to play again. Otherwise, at the end of this function, we are just going to tally up the score and display the score. And in the next part, and the last part of this particular series, we will discuss the, the actual script body, the main part of the script that's going to run all of these functions, and that was coming up in the next video.